Segovia Show. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Andres Segovia Show podcast. Just drinking some water here. Hope your Monday was better than mine because it's been non-stop phone calls and some technical issues that I had to deal with that uh, I was none too happy to find out that were not resolved by um, the Verizon reps when I had it done in the first place. I'll probably talk about that separately in a, in a more tech-centric episode because I got a lot of tech stuff to talk about, including like social media things and uh, my behaviors on those because the, the dynamics are shifting just a little bit, especially with the Twitter or the Tweety bird is gone now. Now it's X. But that, that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm recording this at the end of a Monday. Uh, I hope your Monday was better than mine. Um, July 24th, 2023. And I normally don't date my podcasts, but I have a question to post to all of you. And if you tune in on Spotify, you'll be able to participate in the poll or the Q&A that I have down there um, where you can weigh in on this. And I'll just ask it for an incentive here. Should I incorporate politics into my podcast? For those of you that have been around the longest, you would know that whenever I talked primarily about politics, especially elections, um, I resorted to my um, often mentioned, but not so much lately, off the record podcast, which is exclusively over on locals.com. And it is making its way over to members only on Spotify and YouTube. Um, maybe soon on Rumble too, but you can join locals from Rumble. Uh, make it easier there. So on locals is where you no, know, it's it it it's uh, unfiltered, uncensored. You know, it's, I, I'm I'm comfortable doing that there because I'm not worried about being um, silenced, shadow banned, or throttled by the big tech companies because it's not on there. But also, I'm inviting people to come have the conversation. But it it almost seems like uh, I need to bring the conversation to you, and I hate. Look, I hate politics. I was a political activist in my early years, and you know it's just confrontations. I don't like it when I'm confronted, so that's why I don't do it. Uh, but uh, lately, now it seems like uh, some people need need to be slapped around silly so they can be told, like, "Yo, get it through your head. No, things are not the way you think they are." <laughs> it's just, it's just, that's just how the way it feels like. That's how the way it is right now. It, it's pretty nuts, and even in the uh, in the in the Republicans slash conservative sphere, there's a lot of uh, infighting going on right now because the whole Trump DeSantis thing going on. Trump is rising, DeSantis is sinking. Yeah, but that's not something I'm trying to weigh in on this one. But it's just giving you a teaser of things that I can talk about because I've talked about them before. And I talked about it on my off the record uh, podcast, but I haven't done an off the record uh, episode about current events. Uh, for quite a while. So whenever I talk about economic policies that affect real estate or the state of tech and the way um, it's draconian measures that are, uh, well, tech actually carries out the, dr the draconian measures of the government's bidding. Um, well, that's all fair game for me. But like to specifically talk about politics uh, and political issues and the like that, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Should I bring it to the to the forefront or should I make it a, a segment of my life section here on the podcast more streamlined for you? Because if I do do that, I know for a fact that as YouTube has been doing a lot, um, you probably those of you on YouTube will not see or hear it. So that's why I recommend you follow me across the socials at the Andres Segovia on Twitter, X, whatever it is, underscore Andres Segovia. But uh, yeah, I got that in mind um, and I, I don't. I feel like I must, but uh, I don't. I really don't want to do it. It just also feels that there are people that need to hear it. Uh, so that's where my thought process is coming from, which is why I front loaded the questions about all this. Um, and it's, this episode is more like I think it's more for me than it is for any of you. Uh, I, I feel like I have to vent a little, which I hope you don't mind, because uh, the insurance crisis have been pretty gnarly here in California. But 
uh, our our fleet of vehicles, because um, Allstate was leaving and the policy was up by mid-July, I got to tell you, it came down to the wire shopping for insurance for almost three months, and I was using three different brokers, two of which I worked for a couple of decades with, uh, and another one was a newer one that I've only just recently established contact with. Uh, and there was a fourth broker that I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to rope in at the last minute because like, no, it's too late for any of that. But the insurance crisis is real. Allstate is one of those major partners or major insurance companies that is leaving California. Uh, and it was leaving us up in the air. Like there were there were no insurance companies that wanted to what is called write insurance for um, construction companies uh, in our space. So we finally found one. And not really a company I ever heard of, but there were some bigger companies that are still around that um they did quote us and at the very end they like they got cold feet and said no say oh you you do this kind of work uh duh we're a construction company it's in the name and so they're like oh in that case no it's uh, too high risk so no we're not gonna we're not gonna write you like dude you whatever you know um the next one over is the homeowner's insurance stuff uh, that's the thing I got to do for the property management side because they're going to be up for renewal pretty soon. And I haven't seen the letters come in about non-renewal notices, but uh, I wanted to get ahead of the curb on that uh, because there's some insurance companies that are not renewing in certain high risk areas due to oh, fires and all that. So we'll see how that all turns out. But folks, it the, the insurance crisis is real. And I don't know how that's really going to uh, pan out for a lot of people that are still in the real estate space buying property because the only way to close escrow is to have insurance. And for those of you that are in my profession, when it comes to the buying and the sell side of the properties, I want to hear from you if you're tuning in. Uh, how has the insurance crisis affected your transactions? Because, you know, it is in a, a very important piece of the puzzle there where if you don't have insurance, you can't close on the escrow. The escrow is demanding you have insurance because the only way title can be issued. If you don't have title, you cannot close escrow. And title is the one holding the funds at the end of the day, not escrow, uh, for the disbursements. Like, okay, escrow creates the balance sheets and then title does the disbursements. But if they're not satisfied by having homeowners insurance, they are not going to close it. So there's, there's a lot there, you know. Uh, with the insurance companies that are leaving, with other insurance companies not renewing, and then those that are still in the mix are looking at super expensive insurance. I mean, I got to tell you, my homeowner's insurance that I renewed about uh, three months ago, um, I paid a, about $1,500 for that. There is someone that lives not too far away from where I live. I would say about 10 to 15 miles away in a different region in the county. And they're, they're more in the, the fire uh, because they have a larger lot too, but um, they also are in a, a region that's more prone to uh, wildfires. Well, I got to tell you, their homeowner's insurance just got renewed at $11,000. Like, oh, crap. Like, if you were paying $1,500 to $2,000, $11,000 is still insanely high for you to have to pay out. And when you're on a fixed income, it's even crazier. So I, I got to tell you, that this whole insurance thing is not getting enough play out there. Uh, and it is affecting homeowners. Um, and man, the cost of living is already very high. The wife and I were balancing the uh, the numbers and just shocking how much more expensive food really gets. I mean, yeah, you know you're paying more when you're going to, um, you know, to, to the checkout. But if you sit down and actually see on a monthly how much money you shell out on food, it, it starts becoming more real. So... That's what we try to do every now and then, and we haven't done it in a while. So when we checked, I'm like, that's not, that can't be, man. That's that's a ton of money. Uh, so we have to, you know, find ways to uh, bring that down. So uh, back to meal prepping is going to be for me because I got a meal prep. That's for sure. <sighs> Some people ask me, Andres, what do you think of Oppenheimer? Oh, when are you going to go watch Oppenheimer? I wish I could tell you when I've been so busy trying to put out fires, figuratively speaking. Um because there's just so much happening and it, the insurance thing coming down to the literal wire was just bonkers. Like I was shopping for three months and it came down to the wire. And if you have your own insurance stories and by all, by all means, uh, contact me via uh, social media and take your pick at the Andres Segovia across everything. And uh, for those on Twitter slash X, whatever it is, Twitter X, 
uh, that's uh, underscore Andres Segovia because we can only do 15 characters. Um, but yeah, you can let me know there. You have an insurance story of your own. If you're a small business owner, how, how this is affecting you. Uh, it was affecting our fleet of, of cars for sure, or trucks, that is. And I can imagine what it's like for others that are going to have a harder time trying to make ends meet. Because uh, sometimes it does feel like you're only working for insurance. When you're a company dealing in California, you have your workers, your workers' comp, your general liability, your auto motor liability insurance, the umbrella insurance policy, uh, the marine inland policy, depending on whether you have some watercraft if you need it. And then lastly, the bond on the insurance and all that stuff and your license. It's just, yeah, it's a lot. Not to mention that every single city that you work in, you need an individual city license and then a tax on that. Yeah, Los Angeles. Yeah. Anyway, that's I guess that's where I'll leave it. Just want to keep this one a little short, letting you know what's been happening in the background. Uh, for those of you that are on YouTube, um, mostly Rumble, though, uh, I am putting up a redux of certain episodes because a, a larger audience now that wasn't around for it um, of conversations that are still worthwhile. They're not timed or dated. So I'm reposting them. For those of you that tuned in to my What is Truth episode, I really appreciate you all because I thought it was an excellent conversation that still applies to um, over a year later since I had it. Uh, so for those of you that liked it and that shared it, I appreciate you. And that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in to this latest episode of the Andres Segovia Show podcast. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.